It's NFL Daily Week 11 Power Rankings Edition. The Denver Broncos just got embarrassed on Sunday Night Football. Is their season all but over? Ryan Fitzmagic brought back the Bucks to victory against the Jets, but is it too little too late for Tampa Bay? The Texans are starting Tom Savage again, so I guess they like losing. How low can Houston go after a putrid game versus the Rams? The Packers found a way against Chicago. Aaron Rodgers is taking snaps. So do we see Green Bay as a possible contender? Rejoice, Houdat Nation! The Saints demolished the Bills last week. Are they destined for a bye week in the NFC? Meanwhile, the Cowboys are in desperation mode after being clobbered by the Falcons. Will the Cowboys drop outside the top 15? Superman Cam got it done under the bright lights versus Miami, but the Saints are rolling too. Can the Panthers keep up with their division rival? The Vikings look legit after taking down the Redskins in Landover. Are they deserving of a top five spot? And the Patriots did work on the Denver Broncos. Will that cause the Eagles to drop from number one to number two? We have all those answers coming at you. It's NFL Daily. Here we go. Hey, how we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Cam Rogers alongside Harris Rubenstein. It's NFL Daily Week 11 Power Rankings Edition on this thirsty Thursday evening. Harris Rubenstein, how you doing, my man? Doing all right, doing good. Happy to be back on the program. Doing a little 32 to 1. I'm excited. It's been a, been, it's been a hot minute since I've been on NFL Daily. Well, you're absolutely right. We will count you down, ladies and gentlemen. Number 32 all the way to the number one team in the NFL right now. Big question for all the audience members out there. Will the Eagles drop from number one to number two because they're on the bye week and the Patriots hmm. played pretty darn well? You're going to have to stay tuned hmm. to find out. Keep the comments flowing. We're completely <laughs> live here, so we'll be tracking what you say as we go through all of the teams. Usually points of disagreement throughout our rankings, Harris. We, want we to love hear it. it. We love debate. We want them. Bring it to us. Look, we know we're going to always be right. We're 100% right all the time. So any comment that you give us anyway is just wrong anyway because we're geniuses. So <laughs> there you go. want them anyway. You know. All right. We'll see. So before we get to all that fun stuff, let's get into the news and notes section across the NFL. Kind of a quiet day here, Harris, but one very important injury of note with the Dallas Cowboys. It looks like Byron Bell is going to be at left tackle for time. Can we Smith. just all share a hearty laugh over Chaz Green last week? <laughs> Chaz Green. No, that was an authentic <laughs> laugh from me because oh, oh, Chaz joke. Green was so bad. What a joke. I actually, like right before the show, I asked if Chaz Green got cut this week and was legit legitimately surprised when the answer was no. I was, I was very surprised that he did get cut this week. Not great. So obviously a very significant injury for the Dallas Cowboys. Couple that with Sean Lee and the fact that Ezekiel Elliott won't be playing. Eh, it's looking rough for Dallas against the Eagles on Sunday Night Football. We'll talk more about that later. Speaking of the Eagles, T.O. has said that Carson Wentz better than Donovan McNabb, Harris? Well, I mean, it, it's kind of tough to rank if Donovan McNabb is actually better than Carson Wentz because Carson Wentz has only played a season and a half. But I will say this. I truly believe that Donovan McNabb is one of the all-time great overrated quarterbacks that we've had Whoa. maybe ever in the history of the NFL. His average quarterback rate, his career quarterback rating, Cam, is 85. The, the definition of of NFL average quarterback. He never led the NFL in touchdowns, never really led the NFL in yards, completion percentage, nothing. He, he is Donovan McNabb. <laughs> and that's like, all you got to say about that. Career completion percentage of 59%. Like, I don't know what else you want from me. Carson Wentz will probably end up being better than McNabb, but it's, it's season and a half. Come on, people. All right, T.O. still making headlines as we bring you back on screen here. Cam Rogers alongside Harris Rubenstein. We are presented by Mizzen and Main Advanced Fabric Shirts that all the guys out there will absolutely love. These are great dress shirts, wearing to work, wearing out, parties, corporate events, etc. Dry fit technology, sweat wicking technology, however you want to phrase it. They are so comfortable, way better than cotton hair. 
And I don't even know if Terrell Owens wears these shirts, but I do know for a fact that J.J. Watt wears these shirts. And also, Mike Trout also wears these shirts. So if Mike Trout and J.J. Watt both wear them as in a main shirt, good company. then you should too. That means you should check out their website, comfortable.af, because these shirts are indeed comfortable as F. Get your holiday shopping going right now. All right, Harris, ready for some power rankings, buddy? Let's do it. I'm pumped. Let's get into number 32. Let's roll it the winless Cleveland Browns. It has been the sad factory of the NFL talking about these Browns here. You know what? They competed pretty well against the Lions. It looked like at some point in that game that the Browns were actually going to get their first win, but then they faltered like they do. And you know what, Cam? This was actually Deshaun Kaiser's best game as an NFL pro so far. He graded out his pro football focus as second best QB of the week behind go. only Tom Brady. He was fantastic in this game. Good for Deshaun Kaiser. It just sucked that he got hurt because nothing can ever go right for the Cleveland Browns. Look, our rookie quarterback played well, and it's gone. So, you know, just, you know, classic Browns. Can't wait to see what happens, what, you know, where the sad factors you call lands us next. And they'll be taking on the Jaguars, and don't sleep on that game because uh -oh. they, they could very well get their first win in that one. We'll see. All right, let's check in with number 31 here, the New York football <laughs> Giants. Talk about a team that has just given up, Harris. Like, this is oh, disgusting. Their performance last week, especially against San Francisco. Cam, I have never in my lifetime as a football, which has ranged since 1995 until now, and possibly even before I was born, I have never seen a football team quit on a head coach like the New York Giants are quitting on Ben McAdoo. I can't even bring up a snarky reference as to the last time something has quit on something else except maybe Kim Kardashian quitting on Chris Humphreys. That's the only historical reference I can bring up to the New York Giants quitting on Ben McAdoo. That's all I got, Cam. Be, That's all I got. They'll be taking on the Chiefs this coming Sunday. Giants at number 31. How about number 30 here? And look, this team got a win. They look pretty good doing it, the San Francisco 49ers. C.J. Beathard actually, again, great as the number three quarterback. But I got to say, half of his touchdown, besides the beautiful pass he had here to Marquise Goodwin, half of his yards came because the Giants just weren't trying on defense. Especially I have, Jenkins. I have never seen more pathetic passing attempts than Janoris Jenkins. Look at this highlight right here, Cam. Garrett Selleck. Hey, look. Look who's ahead of him. Janoris Jenkins <laughs> literally <laughs> escorted Selleck into the end zone. That's what it's went just, down. He just didn't even try. Maybe more oh, of an indictment on the Giants, but still, oh, the Niners, they got a win here. They got a, a win, and do you know what? Again, we, we mentioned his name every single week, and I want to continue to mention his name on this program because he deserves it. For the people at home, DeForest Buckner. Oh, DeForest Buckner, DeForest Buckner. He's their second-year DN out of Oregon. He is absolutely spectacular. All right, so the 49ers at 30. Let's head into the 20s now. The Indianapolis Colts, you thought at one point in this game, oh my gracious, they were going to pull an upset up on the Steelers. I'll say this though, Cam, the Indianapolis Colts right now, you know, depending on what happens with Andrew Luck, has one of the most valuable commodities in the NFL. Two starting caliber quarterbacks. Two. That is, I don't think you can name another NFL quarterback. I team do right like Brissett two, a lot, Harris. Two starting NFL quarterbacks. Yeah. Jacoby Brissett is, is good enough. I mean, like, it's all relative, right? Look at the talent pool of quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Pretty darn bad. Yeah, we, it's garbage. That, you know, you want to want to know why NFL ratings are down, it's probably because the NFL quarterback play is garbage. But look, Jacoby Brissett's pat, like, quarterback rating right now is about 84. He's you know getting good yardage. He's, throwing, he's targeting T.Y. Hilton a lot. He has good chemistry with Jack Doyle. He's getting the job done. I mean, you, you got to be happy with what he's been able to do with this team. I know their total offense is down, but their points per game is about 19 or 20. So I, I, I'm happy with Brissett so far. Okay, so the Indianapolis Colts at number 29. Let's check in with number 28 here, the Chicago Bears. I thought they had a good shot at beating a Packers team the led Bears by Bears can't Brett beat Hunley, the Packers. And that didn't happen. Come on, Cam. The Bears can never beat the Packers. That's the whole point of them being the Bears is that they can't beat the Packers. <laughs> they can't do it. But look, Cam. The, this team, I, I, have, I said this last week, and I'll say it again. This team is now fun. The Bears are fun. The defense is quality. Mitchell Trubinsky is fun to watch. Jordan Howard's a beast. Terry Cohen, they need to give him the ball more. But this is a fun football team. I kind of like watching the Bears. Usually they're in almost every game that they've played this year. They're fun. They're competitive. I like it. I like the defense for sure. Chicago at 3-6 and six so far this year. Number 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Ryan Fitz, magic. He got it done. <laughs> he got the victory, well beating Josh McCown in Ugh. the career journeyman bowl. Oh, Bucks. Oh, my God. Have, 
There are so many, I feel like there's one team every single year that you can pick out and say, wow, that team would be so much better if it was coached better. Like that's this, this, team. this team. Like that's this team. Like every single year we have a team like that and this year it's the Bucs. Maybe next year they'll go 10 and six with a better head coach, but for now, it's not pretty. Well, they'll be playing in Miami against the Dolphins, making up for that week one matchup because of the hurricane that went on. So that was essentially their bye week in week one. Which so is just so bucks. It's such a 20, so unfortunate. Such a 2017 Tampa Bay Buccaneers thing to happen. So Tampa Bay inches their way from number 29 to number 27 this week in our NFL power rankings. Number 26, the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh my gracious, they're battling the Broncos this week, and CBS is probably crying about oh, it. Oh man, it's the battle of the suck ball. I can't wait to see it. It's the battle of the teams that Harrison's right about <laughs> look at the Bengals like they just another team that you look at and you're like wow they'd be way better with coaching and also I gotta say the defense might have talent on I think the defense right now might be kind of a little bit overrated we'll see what ends up happening with this defense because Vontez perfect since he's come back from suspension has actually been pretty pretty bad he's one of the worst coverage linebackers in all of football and has not been able to do anything against the run so far and he's supposed to be the centerpiece of their defense but he's pretty good at touching refs though. yeah exactly he's pretty good at pissing off referees but Look, this Bengals team is fine, but you want to know another problem? Do you want to know what – guess what Guess what? Marvin Lewis couldn't stop talking about this week? What's that? Guess what he couldn't stop doing? He couldn't stop publicly crapping on John Ross and Andy Dalton in the media. Oh, because God. when you're three and six, what you need to do is target your 21-year-old first-round wide receiver. Thank you, Marvin Lewis. That's exactly what you need to do. Usher him Ridiculous. out of there. Cincinnati Bengals Outrageous. there at number 26. They battle the Denver Broncos, as we said, at mile high. How about number 25 here? The Houston Texans, led by the Savage himself, Mr. Tom Savage. Now with two career touchdown passes. Good yay, Tom. yay, go, Tom, Tom Savage. <laughs> They're so bad, yeah. They're so bad without Deshaun Watson. It's, it's so sad because... I think DeAndre Hopkins, to me, is like Mike Trout in baseball. The Texans are just wasting away one of like the great primes of an NFL wide receiver again. They're doing this again. They wasted the whole prime and whole career of Andre Johnson, and they're doing it again to DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins is going to end up being the next Larry Fitzgerald. We're like, wow, I wonder what his career would have been like if he was with a quarterback for the first you know, half of his career. I pray Deshaun Watson comes back and actually ha gives him a good career. The Texans got clobbered by the Rams 33-7 in that previous week. Let's summarize what we have for you so far. If you're just tuning in to NFL Daily, 32-29, Browns, Giants, 49ers, and Colts. As we take a look at 28 through 25, the Chicago Bears, then the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Cincinnati the Bengals, and the Houston Texans. So we have up until 25 so far. Hey, folks, Cam Rogers alongside Harris Rubenstein here on NFL Daily Power Rankings Edition. Week 11 is upon us, and we are presented by Miss It Ann, Main 22nd Century Level Stuff right here. Fantastic performance fabric shirts that guys will love. Dress shirts that you can wear anywhere. Makes you feel like you're going to the gym. You got to check out this website. Harris, are you doing your holiday shopping yet? Oh, I'm definitely doing my holiday shopping. You got to say, Cam, Joe Flacco may not be an elite quarterback, but Miss It Main has some elite shirts. Why can't they both be elite? Because only one could be elite, and it's definitely not Joe Flacco. Comfortable.af is the website as we Boom. push aside the Joe Flacco <laughs> thing for now. Let's get to number 24 Let's do it. in our power rankings. The Denver Broncos. Ah. I call this, you probably call ah. it too, one of the fraudiest teams in the NFL Woo. at the beginning of the year, and they're proving all of us right. Oh, man. Look what happens when you take a team that runs solely off of confidence and take away <laughs> all of the confidence. This actually brings me to a point I wanted to make about an old head coach. He's now retired. Cam, shout out to Gary Kubiak. Mm. Because apparently Gary Kubiak, look, for what he did with the Texans and being defiled by Matt Schaub and his pick sixes every year, to taking Peyton Manning and, a, and his garbage throwing arm to the Super Bowl two years in a row, Gary Kubiak apparently was the messiah for the Broncos. Because ever since they lost him, they've done nothing but just middle around and wait to be good again. But they're not. Gary Kubiak must be the savior. And I really hope that he gets another job. But Vance Joseph, I just he can't, get, for him. I, he can't get what he needs to out of this team. He can't. They don't have a quarterback. Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins of the Broncos? Oh, Maybe. There you go. Elway loves Option? to make the big splashes. 
So the Denver Broncos checking in at number 24. Number 23, you thought for a split second, wait a minute, could this be a wild card team? And then all of that just went to bed oh when my, they lost they're gonna to Tampa go, Bay. They're gonna, dude, they're gonna go six and 10 and end up with pick like nine. <laughs> they're not gonna get any quarterback. It's gonna be, a, they're gonna end up with Josh Allen, who's just Christian Hackenberg all over again. Lamar, maybe? No, don't let Lamar, no, don't let Lamar Jackson go to the Jets. Lamar don't curse, Jackson, baby. Don't curse me like that, Cam. <laughs> no, like, th 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 this Jets team is just bad. <laughs> this Jets team isn't good. Like, we, this, they're, they're now back to what we expected. But yep. guess what? At least they weren't in playoff contention and then benched their starting quarterback. We'll get to you, Bills. We are not done with you. <laughs> So the Jets there falling from 20 last week to number 23 this week. How about number 22? Uh, deuces wild, the Arizona Cardinals. I had a lot of high expectations for this team going into the season, but when I you didn't. lose Carson Palmer, you lose David Johnson, what do you expect? I honestly, the all year going into the season and now sitting here, they are still the same team I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be an 8-8, eight 9-7 eight, football team. Like, the, the team has good talent, but... They just consistently underperform for whatever reason. Carson Palmer is way too old. And for whatever reason, they still think that the likes of, you know, Ryan Lindley and I don't even know who they're starting. Drew ready, Stanton ready for this? are legitimate NFL options. This week, it's Blaine Gabbert like, versus come, Tom Savage. Like, come come Let's on. Go. Come the hell on, Bruce Arians. <laughs> You're supposed to be this offensive guru, yet every single year with like a 35, 36, and 37-year-old quarterback in Carson Palmer, he's gone into the year with his backups being Drew Stanton and Blaine Gabbert and Ryan Lindley. Like, come on. I know he's supposed to be a perceived good head coach, but that's a, that's a joke. That's a laughable personnel decision. So there you go. Like, what do you think was going to happen with Drew Stanton? It's Come a train on. wreck right now for the Cardinals. They'll Ugh. battle the Texans this week on the road. They're there at number 22. Number 21, another fraud team, the Miami Dolphins. Remember when they were 4-2, and two, Harris? This, okay, Cam, hot take. I think them being a number 21 might be a little bit high. I didn't adjust my rankings. Cam Newton had his way with them. I think this might be one of the three worst teams in football. Wow. Because it doesn't, like... There are certain teams that have, like, th this is the thing. Sometimes there are bad teams that have no talent. Sometimes there are good teams who have no talent who are just good anyway. And then there's my favorite teams. There are bad teams who have great talent. And you want to know what that means? It means it just doesn't work. It means that whatever they're doing in the locker room, wherever the coaching staff is saying to the players, whatever the game plan is going week in and week out, it just isn't working. Mm. And the, the talent, of the, they, there's no reason this Dolphins team should be four and five. No reason. This Dolphins team should probably be six and three. But guess what? It doesn't work. Because every team, most for the most part, takes on the personality of their starting quarterback. And guess what? Half of the Dolphins Jay team Cutler. Is, half of the Dolphins team is given up. It's Lethargic almost like Jay Cutler. Literally, literally infected the whole locker room. Bad decision. Miami Dolphins at number 21 in our power rankings. At number 20, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. This is a team that should have beaten the Jaguars last week, Harris, but let it slip away. Too many opportunities. I have a lot of faith in this team to maybe make some noise uh, this season, maybe get to a 9-7, and seven, but now at 3-6, and six, it's going to be hard. Cam, what did you just say? They should have, yeah. they, they could have, yeah. and they would have. I'm using those words. That is literally the Chargers season in a nutshell. They should have been better. They could have been better. They would have been a playoff team. But guess what? It didn't happen because the Chargers disappointed me. They disappointed Pete Prisco. They <laughs> disappointed everybody, Cam. And now all they have are just two amazing pass rushers middling around on a three and six football team. Sad. Sad. Very, Very sad, sad, Cam. All right. Well, the Chargers will be taking on the Bills in Los Angeles this week. That'll Let's get into the teens now. Number 19, the Baltimore Ravens. Now, hear me out here, Harris. Since 1990, 2017 have qualified for the playoffs with a losing record through nine games. The Ravens, one of those teams right now. Last year, Green Bay and Pittsburgh did it. They both went on to their respective conference championship games. So, it can happen. It can happen. It's just... Look, it, I, I'm sure that as of right now, they're probably the favorites for wild card spots since the Bills bench their starting quarterback. We'll, we'll get to the Bills. But yeah. I just, look, if the Ravens make it to the playoffs, like, are they going to win a road playoff game with this team? Pro sure. Probably not. Sure. Joe but, Flacco, historically, has been great on the road in the, in the playoffs. Great on the road in the playoffs. I'm worried about the rest of the team. I'm worried about the fact that they can't stop the run. They, they haven't a good enough secondary, but they can't run the ball and they can't stop the run. 
usually a combination of those two things in the playoffs is, is an instant lose. So I, I think they'll make the playoffs. I really do. I, I don't know who in the head of them is going to make the playoffs in the AFC right now, but I, go, go for the Ravens. They can make the playoffs of this team. They can do anything. I mean, they'll be battling Brett Hundley this week. Then they got Tom Savage coming up. They have the Colts hey, later we, this year. So we, we talked about late in the season in, in November, end of November, in December, it's all about the quarterbacks you face. And if yep. they don't have the competition there, they could easily rip off four to five wins. Especially in a watered down AFC. Speaking sure. of Brett Hundley, we got the Packers checking in at number 18 in our power rankings. Green Bay coming off a victory against the Chicago Bears. But does it really mean much, Harris? All right. Yes, it does. Okay. Because not only did Brett, I, I think Brett Hundley just woke up. I think he woke up in the fourth quarter. I think it took him a couple games to get adjusted to the speed. And then, boom, he just exploded. Like, the, he just literally came out of nowhere, put together three great drives in the second half, and looked outstanding. He, he was great in the second half of that game. What if he just woke up? What This Packers team is 5-4. and four. The, we, we talked about it last week about how if Matt Stafford doesn't win this division with Mitchell Trubinsky, you know, uh, uh, Mitchell Trubinsky, Brett Hundley, and Case Keenum as the quarterbacks in his division, it's pathetic. But the Lions aren't winning this division. No. The Packers could easily slide into the second wild card spot if Brett Hundley gets hot. I, 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 don't, I think this is a good team. So we are completely live, ladies and gentlemen. We want you weighing in with your thoughts about this. Should the Packers bring back Aaron oh, Rodgers yeah. if healthy now of course oh, yeah. it's got to depend on where they're at oh right? yeah want to know why he because you only have right, Aaron Rodgers is not going to pull a Tom Brady and play till he's 43 he's just not he's taking he's had too many injuries in his career he's taking too many shots he is 32 years old right now you need to get as much as you possibly can out of Aaron Rodgers career right now he might be the greatest physical thrower that the NFL has ever seen and if he has the opportunity to play, he needs to be in there. He just has to be in there. But they need – he has to be healthy. Because if you bring him back and he's, like, iffy, like he's, like, 60%, well, yeah, I mean, he's gotta be 70% right? yeah. with that collarbone, let him wait because you don't want an Andrew Luck situation. Yep. All right, so throw in your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be tracking the comments as we see fit. Cam Rogers alongside Harris Rubenstein. You're watching NFL Daily here on Chat Sports Facebook Live. We thank you for coming along here for the ride. We just did number 18 in our power rankings, the Green Bay Packers. Let's check in with number 17 here, the Oakland Raiders. It's essentially their season this week against the England in Mexico, Harris. And for this team, one of the bigger disappointments. One of the bigger disappointments. I had this game circled on my calendar as like one of the biggest games to watch this year in the NFL. I was really, really excited to see what the Raiders were going to be able to do against a top flight Patriots team. And, you know, I still am kind of excited for this game. I, I know they've been a disappointment, but they, they took the bye week. They got healthy. The defense, for the most, the secondary is just bad. Gary on Conley is going to be on IR. I know they just got Obi Melo and Fomu back, but it just it never really came together for the Raiders, and it sucks because it, you know last year or I, I, is it their last year in Oakland? Second last year in Oakland? No, they have a couple more years. Couple yeah. more years. So we'll see what ends up happening with the Oakland Raiders, but it just didn't really come together this year. We'll see. They could have a huge second half and prove us all wrong. So the Oakland Raiders checking in at four and five, still technically in the AFC yep. playoff hunt. Probably not going to win the AFC West, but no. certainly in the wild card chase here. So the Oakland Raiders there at number 17. Let's take a look at what we have so far. If you're just tuning in and you maybe missed your team, you have a chance to check them out now. We got the Browns at 32, then the Giants at 31, Niners at 30, Colts at number 29. Going 28 through 25 here, Bears, Buccaneers, Bengals, and the Texans. And then the Broncos with a big time three fall from the beginning of the year. They're at 24, Jets at 23. Cardinals at 22, likely to start Gabbert this week. And then the Dolphins at 21. And then we have towards the middle of the pack, number 20, the Chargers, 19, the Baltimore Ravens, Packers at number 18, and the Oakland Raiders at number 17. As we said, we want you commenting, throwing in your thoughts about all of the teams in the NFL or your team, such as for Clay and the Vikings. Do you think the Vikings can make it to the Super Bowl? Absolutely yes. Their best team in football. Yes. Ball Joseph. Harrison Smith, you, Anthony Barr. You cannot convince me that there's a better team in football right now than the Vikings outside of the Eagles and the Patriots. You can't. I'm sorry. They're, they're 
blowing out good teams with Case Keenum. And that offensive line that is a lot better this year than it was last year, mm -hmm. that is very important to know because they, they struggled last they, year. They have a great two-headed running attack. They have great receivers, possession guys, and deep guys. The defense, you know, it's veteran defense, great coaching, smart play calling. I'm, I'm all aboard this Vikings team. I, I really am. All, skull, baby, skull. All right, 2-2. Two, two. The Vikings playing pretty darn well. I'm on the uh, train right now for sure. Keep those comments flowing as we continue our rankings here. Taking a look at number 16, one of the more odd ah. franchises in the NFL in the Buffalo Bills. Harris, take it away. Cam, I want to roll back the tape uh, to when Tom and I were doing this, and we were talking about how the Bills are prospective playoff team. It was back when they were 5-2, five, 4-1, five and two, four and one, whatever it was. And I told him, I was like, don't buy the Bills. Because this is what they do every year. They get you excited for the first half of the year. Something weird happens in the middle of the season. And then they just suck. The, every single year. And guess what they did this year? They were really good. Da, 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 and now they're just sucking for the rest of the year. They are in playoff contention. And they just benched their starting quarterback for no reason. Tyrod Taylor did not give up 298 rushing yards to the Saints. Tyrod Taylor has actually been pretty darn good this year for them. Are the Bills frauds? If I had six hearts to throw at the screen right now, I would. They're huge frauds. This is what they do every single year. This is who the Bills are as a franchise. They get something good, they muddle around with it, and then they lose. They are the eternal loser of the NFL. They are, more, they are a bigger loser of a franchise than the Browns. I'm sorry. This is what they do all the time. They deserve nothing but harassment. The Bills have yet Constant. to make the playoffs in this millennium. House. I love Bills Mafia. I hate this franchise. They do this all the time. Who's? Let me ask you a question. Who has a better chance of leading you to the playoffs? A eight-year NFL veteran or a fifth-round rookie draft pick out of the University of Pittsburgh? Yeah, Pittsburgh of Come all on. places. Come on. Nathan Ugh. Peterman? Are you kidding me? So, Harris, suffice it to say that Sean McDermott just threw out his candidacy to be coach of the year. Oh, for sure. <laughs> if they made the playoffs, he's the easy coach of the year. But no, again. Not anymore. Look, Bills had a great roster a couple years ago. Remember what they did? They hired Rex Ryan to be their head coach. This year, potential playoff team. Bench is starting quarterback week nine. Why? 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 God, it's infuriating. So, the Buffalo Bills. Stupid. They could be falling as we go throughout the season. Right now, they're smack dab in the middle at number 16. Right. Let's check in with number 15 here, the Detroit Lions. Can't quite figure out this team yet, Harris. The jury is still out for me. Here's the deal with the Lions. They try to run the football, and yeah, Amir Abdullah can do it. Theo Riddick pretty nice in, in receiving game out of the backfield. But it's all down to Stafford, it seems. I can, I can, here, I can give you, I can, I can explain them for yes, you, Yes, please. They're an average football team who plays an average brand of football, who's going to win an average amount of football game. Eight and eight. Th this is like, I I'm I look, and, and I've said it for weeks in a row now. Matt Stafford is currently in a division with Brett Hundley, Case Keenum, and Mitchell Trubinsky. And he can't win the NFC North. You finally get a year with no Aaron Rodgers. You finally get a year with, with, another, with a weak Bears team, eh? one of the worst teams in football. And you still can't win your division. I get the Vikings are good. Fine. But they're still quarterbacked by Case Keenum. You're Matthew Stafford. You're the highest paid player in football. That's and a good you point. You're you a rich man. You will this team to an NFC North title with no Aaron Rodgers? Come on. I, I, this is why I have a huge problem with Stafford. This has been his whole NFL career. So the Detroit Lions at number 15. They were at number 17 last week. They moved up a little bit after their victory yep. against the Cleveland Browns. All right, number 14 in our power rankings, the Washington Redskins. You thought at the beginning of the year, okay, watch out for this team, and then they, you know, have looked pretty iffy the last few weeks. It just, and uh, you know, just, that's the Redskins. <laughs> Yay. Like, well, it's no. a tough division too, Harris. I know, it is a tough division. They're kind of the opposite of the Lions, where they're in a division with a lot of other, you know, good quarterbacks, and they just, they just, they get, beat by good teams. They, they, they can beat bad teams, but whenever they go up against a team that, like they can never, for instance, how you can tell what a good team is that sometimes they might not have as much talent on their team as the team they're playing against, but they can still pull out wins. But this Redskins team, you for the past, I don't know, three years, four years, whenever they have gone up against a team that has marginally even better talent 
than they do, they just lose. Like the Vikings. Just the, I wouldn't say the Vikings have an outstanding amount of overall better talent than they do, but they just they continue to falter. They did find a way to pull a rabbit out of their hat and beat the Seattle Seahawks That was a great game. Seattle. That was a good one. I, I, I would give them a little. I'm not going to put a lot of stock into it. Exactly. Because because what, what, was, what, was, what was that more? Was that more the Redskins winning that game right. or the Seahawks losing? I think it was Seattle losing. Ex- like, they, they missed three field goals. Like, they would have lost. They would have, if they hit two of those, they would have won. Yeah. So the Redskins have been dealing with their fair share of injuries yes. and chemistry problems on the outside with Terrell Pryor. Big bust right now yeah. with that acquisition. So the Redskins there at number 14. How about number 13 staying in the NFC East? We have the Dallas Cowboys, part of our news and notes section as well. At the beginning of the show, looks like Byron Bell will play at left tackle. No Tyron Smith, it appears, according to multiple reports. No Sean Lee on the defensive side either. Obviously, Zeke Elliott gone for the next five games. He already has uh, gone through his one game. So you lose all three of those pieces, and you're in free fall. Such a shame because I was so I, I, I had bought, I bought into the to the Cowboys. I did. I thought they were like I thought this was going to be a playoff team. I thought this was going to be a team that was going to be really tough out in the playoffs. Great O line, good defensive line, solid 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 enough secondary, and a great running game. I was there and. Meh, but but look, I'll say this much. You know, I, I probably referenced Colin Cowherd like a tiny bit too much, but he, he's been on fire recently. He mentioned something really, really smart about this Falcons game. They were out their best, their most valuable player on their whole team, arguably, in Sean Lee. They were out Tyron Smith, and they had no Ezekiel Elliott. Burn the tape. Burn the tape. Like, there's just, there's nothing you can do with that game. They were out their best offensive lineman, their best defensive player, and their best best positional player. Egg is just burn the tape. Start over next week. See what you can do when you have Tyron Smith back. I don't think the season's over. They have a tough stretch of games coming up, but th- th- this that game against the Falcons, I-, I think was a little bit of a fluke. Of course they were going to lose without Tyron Smith, Sean Lee, and, and Ezekiel Elliott. Of course they were going to lose. They were never going to win that game. On the road, no way. Give them a little bit more time. Let them get Tyron Smith back. Let them get healthy. I think they have enough pieces on their team to make up for Zeke in the short term. I think by the time Zeke gets back, they'll still be in a chance to maybe make a late season run. Well, just so you know, I mean, the question states, if they lose Sunday night against Philadelphia, they drop back to 5-5. Five and five, And right now in the NFC playoff picture, they're the 10th seed. It's crazy. So they're on the way outside looking in right now. There's still a little bit of conference reshuffling. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be fun. I don't know. Interesting, interesting Cowboys and Patriots there. in the same conference. I don't know. That'd be fun. Not going to expect that coming from <laughs> you, but there you go. All right, folks, throw in your thoughts about that as we remind you that we are indeed presented by Mizzen and Maine. Head on to comfortable.af for these fantastic performance fabric shirts made right here in America. Sweat wicking technology, no ironing needed, no dry cleaning, and many other products on their website as well here. It's great for me. I, I currently don't own an ironing board. Whenever I have to iron, I iron on my bathroom sink, and it's there you not go. great. So I don't have to do any of these shirts. It's super helpful. Cam Rogers alongside Harris Rubens. I got one thing before we do our summary. Happy 32nd anniversary to my parents. Today is their anniversary. Oh, Love there you, you go. Got you. Uh, the son of the year right I there. I I can. There you have it. NFL Daily here. Let's summarize what we have so far in our power rankings. Browns, Giants, Niners, and Colts, the bottom feeders right now in the NFL. 28 through 25, Bears, Buccaneers, Bengals, and the, the Texans. Bucks. Starting Tom Savage. Ah. Denver Broncos at 24. Then you got the Jets at 23. Cardinals 22. Dolphins at number 21. Harris thinks they should be lower than that. Uh-huh. We got the Chargers, then the Ravens, then the Packers, and the Raiders. Big game for Oakland against the Patriots this week. And then the middle area, we got the Buffalo Bills at 16, Detroit Lions at 15, Washington Redskins at 14, Cowboys at 13. Isn't it interesting as you start from the end of the NFL and you get to here, you can see the progressiveness of the quarterback play among these teams just get better and better exactly. and better yeah, and exactly better. Right. Yep. That's all that matters. There you go. All right, so we have up to 13 covered. Let's go to number 12, the Tennessee Titans. Marcus Mariota, since entering the NFL in 2015, has 36 touchdown passes, Harris. No interceptions in the red zone. The best TD to pick ratio in the league. Oh, he's the king of the red zone. Obviously. He's the king of the red zone. But I'll say this, Cam. I I don't get this team. I can't tell if they're really good or if they're super average or if they're bad. I think their offensive coaching is bad, but they have good players. Their offensive line is solid, but their defensive line is kind of underwhelming. Logan Ryan has been really bad this year. 
but the rest of the secondary has been good. Like, I can't I, – I don't know if they're good. I think tonight will honestly answer that question. Are the Tennessee Titans a good football team? Can they go into the steel – into Heinz Field, the big ketchup bottles, sure. you love to call it, and give them a game? I don't know. We'll know tonight. Yeah, we'll find out. But at this point, I really don't know if they're a good football team. I, I, I don't know. We're nine weeks in. I have no clue. So the Titans at 6-3, and three, and they're battling with the Jacksonville Jaguars. It seems like they're a one-week like, playoff team. Like they beat the Bengals They beat the Bengals at home by four on a, like a last-second touchdown. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know. All right, so the Tennessee Titans move up a little bit from number 14 to 12 this week. Number 11 in our power rankings, the Atlanta Falcons. And how about Adrian Claiborne? His six sacks are tied for the second most in a single game since Pro Football Hall of Famer Derek Thomas Harris had seven in, on November 11th, 1990. I'm, I'm just going to that, – well, first of all, congrats to Adrian Claiborne, who hasn't had the NFL career that we really expect him to be, you know, one of the top ten picks back in, I believe it was, 2000, I want to say 2009 that he got drafted. He was one of the top recruits coming out of college. But I just – do you know what this team is to me? Are they back? No, they, they, uh, I would. I, I wish I could eye roll this team into oblivion. I just the the play calling's bad, but the Falcons, they're fun. Matt Ryan, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm I'm kind of iffy on the Falcons. Eh, you know I'm not what? iffy on our next team though. They're, I love our next team. They're gonna stun Seattle on Monday Night Football. I'm telling you. Really? That, right? Oh, absolutely. Ooh, what a pick! Yep. Are we gonna hear that tomorrow on oh, the Cam Rogers you'll, show? You'll be hearing it tomorrow oh, on the Cam Rogers show, 10 o'clock Eastern time, right here on Chat Sports. Stay tuned for that. Falcons check in at number 11. Yes. The Jacksonville Give Jaguars me. at number 10. Harris, are you on board? The curse is broken, Cam. They, they broke They broke the curse. They are no longer the crappy. Cam, listen to how they won this game. Blake Bortles threw the ball 51 times. He threw two separate interceptions in the last minute 40 of the whole football game. Sounds like me. Their leading rusher was Corey Grant, who scored a 56-yard touchdown on a fake punt. He was their leading rusher for the whole game. They went to overtime. They had to get a turnover, and they won. They somehow won this football game. This is ne the Jacksonville Jaguars have never won a football game like this. They just ra they randomly won a football game. The curse is broken. I've never seen the Jaguars win a game like that. Okay, so if the Jags were to make the playoffs, can Blake Bortles win a playoff game on his own, or maybe with the defense, yes, or with LOL defense. in general? Well, LOL in general, but also yes with that defense. <laughs> Look, if you can run the ball well and play good defense, you can win a playoff game. But I will say this. If you go – think of think of the teams that have won a Super Bowl in the past 20 years. Okay. Outside of the Saints, who had an outstanding year from Drew Brees, name me a warm-weather team that has won a Super Bowl. Mm. The they're they're, they're only other one were the Bucks. Led by John Gruden. That's true. Yep. Outside of that, every other team that has won a Super Bowl has been a norther has been a northern team, which shows you very interesting that warm weather teams in the playoffs struggle heavily when they have to go. Up I'm the getting road. a lot of LOLs right now. Then in the we should bowl. we should get a lot of LOLs. <laughs> I love it. All right, so the Jaguars are at number ten. Who knows what they can do going forward? Go Jags! I'm there on you board. Go. Harris is on board. So let's get inside to number nine here. The Carolina Panthers oh super cam balled out against Miami on Monday Night Football. Oh, wow, awesome. what a game. There, there are certain players in the NFL that just when they want to, they're just, they're just amazing. Like, we, that, was, that was Hall of Fame cam. Sometimes cam looks like a Hall of Famer. That was one of those games. He had a, a one season where all he did all season long was look like a Hall of Famer. That was Hall of Fame cam. Like, sometimes we'll get the guy shouldn't even be starting level quarterback in the NFL, Cam Newton. That was Hall of Fame level Cam Newton. That was unbelievable. I haven't seen him play a game like that since his MVP year. Which, wait, that was two years ago, not last year. I thought it was last year. Well, we got to give that defense a lot of credit, too. No, it's been They're great. They're playing fantastic. It's been fantastic. Like, you know, it's, it's tough to give any defense credit against the, one of the worst offenses I've ever seen in the Miami Dolphins. But I will say this. Defense has been getting the job done. You know, ever, like Luke Kuechly has been great. Thomas Davis has been great. The secondary has been fantastic. I'm, I'm on board with this Panthers team. I don't know how good they really are quite yet in terms of beating good good teams, but 
they're going to be a playoff team. I think that's good. They find ways to win. Sometimes it's ugly, but that's what the Carolina Panthers hey, do. So, Ju- seven and three. Julius Peppers. There you go. Still, still kicking. There you go. Pretty darn good, according, according to Pro Football Focus, at his age right now with a 71.5 grade. So not too bad for the old man. All right, folks. The Panthers are at number nine. Summarizing what we have so far. So we got the Browns, the Giants, the 49ers, and the Colts, the bottom four teams as we stand. Then we have 28 through 25, the Bears, the Buccaneers, the Bengals, and the Texans. And then 24 through 21, Broncos, Jets, Cardinals starting Gabbert this week, most likely, and the Miami Dolphins. The Chargers at 20, Ravens at 19, Packers at 18. Packers and Ravens will play this week. And the Raiders at number 17. Then the Buffalo Bills at 16, Detroit Lions at 15, Redskins at 14. There are the Dallas Cowboys at 13 playing on Sunday Night Football. The Tennessee Titans at 12, Atlanta Falcons at number 11, the Jacksonville Jaguars at 10, and the Carolina Panthers go Jags, at go. number 9. Let's get to number 8, the Seattle Seahawks. And this is a team that has Russell Wilson, who is one of the more clutch quarterbacks in the late game. So he is the NFL's top-ranked passer in the fourth quarter with a 135.2 passer rate. That's how the Seahawks team has literally been winning games for it's four Russell years Wilson. now. It's well, uh, defense, defense, defense through the first three quarters. We're going to score 10 points, and then all of a sudden we're winning 24 to 10 and the game's over. And it's just, oh, look how we beat the Cardinals. Blah, 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 kind of like oh, no score. We win 22 to 16 off of a late, crazy Russell Wilson touchdown throw. Like, it's just what they do. Like, it's what they've done. And by the way, I don't care what the Seahawks are on power rankings. I don't care. They still, to me, are the team to beat in the NFC. Until a team can go into Seattle in the playoffs in January and win a playoff game, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. They, the time that the Seahawks lose games is when they have to go on the road in the playoffs and, they, and they're down early in the game. But this team at home in the playoffs is still unbeatable for my money. We'll see. They moved up from 11 to number 8. We'll see if they can move up anymore as they battle the Falcons on Monday Night Football. All right, number 7 here. This team was idle a week ago. The Kansas City Chiefs are coming off a bye, but Andy Reid and those Chiefs well, Reed especially has been one of the best coming off the of bye. Andy Reid, in, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated head coaches in NFL history. You know, took all those Eagles teams to the playoffs with Donovan McNabb, has now been carrying Alex Smith to the playoffs for years now. But I'll say this much, Cam. And, and I said this at the start of the season when Alex Newton, or Alex Newton, Alex Smith started off hot. This is the problem with Alex Smith. He is only good when you're able to run the ball. The Kansas City Chiefs have not, been able, have not run for over 100 yards in a month. In that time, they are 1-3. Mm-hmm. And in that time, Alex Smith has been garbage. Because fun fact, this year, just like every single year, when you need Alex Smith to win you football games, guess what he can't do? Win you football games. This has been his entire career. His whole career. You can't run the ball. Alex Smith can do nothing. And the Chiefs have struggled ever since Kareem Hunt hit the rookie wall. Like, we, everyone projected he was going to hit the rookie wall. And they're yep. like, all right, hit the rookie wall. Alex Smith, carry us. Loses three of four. Just not surprised. Not surprised at all. Well, the Chiefs can kind of breathe easily here coming off the bye. They'll be battling the lowly Giants in New York, whoa, whoa, in New Jersey. Whoa. We'll see. <laughs> however you want to say it. Yeah, so uh, the Chiefs are at number seven here. Number six, the L.A. Rams, Los Ryan. Angeles, leading the NFL, averaging 32.9 points per game. The new show of the season. season. If you were going to ask me what team I want to buy, like, stock in, like, future in, I want to buy the Rams. Yeah. Buy me the Rams. Sure. Great running back, great quarterback, great young head coach, decent enough offensive line, and, and a good enough defense. That, that, like, this is how you win in the NFL. All, like, it, it's astonishing what happens when you give a talented roster a good coach. Someone that, like, just go listen to his locker room speeches. The guy inspires his players to play up to their potential. A fiery guy, McVay. Fiery guy. I had the Rams a little bit higher than this. I actually had the Rams at five. I think they're one of the five best teams in football. You actually, until the Rams and the Saints play each other and the Saints beat the Rams, you actually can't convince me that the Saints are a better football team right now than the Rams. I, I, I just won't believe you. I think that this Rams team is on path to being one of the scarier teams in the NFL going forward. They remind me a lot of the Boston Celtics mm-hmm. in, the, in the NBA right now. Great young head coach, great leader, good pieces across the board, and quality depth. Like, that, that's how you win football games the NFC, especially as a warm weather team. I think that this Rams team is a serious future. They have a serious interior with Michael Brockers and Aaron Donald oh, right yeah. now. And LaMarcus Joyner playing really well at the strong safety position. 
Tremaine Johnson has actually had a pretty down year, all things considered, with his resume. Yeah. But still. He, for my money, Tremaine Johnson has always been kind of the league average number one corner, if that makes sense. Like, he's going to be good against an average target, but they've had to play a lot of really good outside receivers this year, and he just hasn't really been able to keep up. He's been nicked up with a couple angles and knees this year as well. But th th this Rams seems to be just fine. They have good draft capital in the next couple of years, th despite the Jared Goff trade. They have a good GM, at, at least for now. Les Snead has kind of gone back and forth, but it's all about Sean McVay. Sean McVay right now is, is easily the head coach of the year. By the way, Jared Goff is the first player in – Team history to pass for at least 300 yards and three touchdowns with no picks in consecutive games. Jared Goff getting it done for the LA Rams. They battle the Vikings in what is probably the game of the week oh, in my 100%. eyes, Harris. We'll I'm talk pumped. about the Vikings later. But let's get to number five here. The Pittsburgh Steelers. They have the leading rusher right now with Le'Veon Bell. They have the leading receiving yards man and Antonio Brown. And the leading receiver out of the rookie class in Juju Smith-Schuster. And guess the what? Ends. They beat the Colts by three points on the last <laughs> yeah, All that said. <laughs> like, like, what do you, like, the, look, the Steelers team is the same thing they are every year. They're great at home and they can't win on the road. Hooray. Let's see what happens when they have to go on the road and play the Patriots in Foxborough again. And they have to go on the road and play the Chiefs in Kansas City or, you know, just like all this stuff. It's the same thing every year. Let's see what happens with the Steelers when they have to go on the road. I know they beat the Chiefs last year, but same thing happened again. They beat them this year, too. The, the, Chiefs asked, uh, the Chiefs asked Alex Smith to win them a football game, and guess what he couldn't do? Win, win them a football game. game. So, look, Steelers are great. I'm, you know, I am the number one Le'Veon Bell fan in the world. I think he's going to go down as one of the greatest NFL running backs of all time. But we'll see what ends up happening with the Steelers. I think number five is, is a good spot for them. The Pittsburgh Steelers, it, it's amazing to me, Harris, that Mike Tomlin still has this problem where this team plays down to their competition sometimes. Tomlin is a seasoned coach. I mean, how I, is he not instilled this I also yet? still have a problem that it seems that most Pittsburgh Steelers fans that I talk to are constantly talking about blah, 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 Mike Tomlin this, blah, 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 Mike Tomlin. Well, I like a Bill, lot, by the way. Not Bill Cowher. Like, shut up. He's been one of the better head coaches in the – like, I don't think you can name 10 better head coaches in football right now than Mike Tomlin. I don't think you've been, you've been able to do that for the past decade. Mm -hmm. Like, just – appreciate what you have you went from a super bowl winning quarterback or a super bowl winning coach to mike tomlin who's been one of the elite coaches in the nfl stop complaining let mike tomlin be mike tomlin his players love him they're in the playoffs every year what more do you want the steelers defense by the way has been very good no one talks so about this them year. and yeah. we haven't either they've been fantastic they play tonight against the tennessee titans and what could be somewhat of a wild card to, preview to so. prove who is actually a good football team because <laughs> we're not go. really sure yet <laughs> so the pittsburgh steelers checking in at number five in our power rankings if you're just joining us ladies and gentlemen we are summarizing what we have so far so the bottom feeder teams we got the browns giants 49ers and colts and then 28 through 25, we have the Bears, Buccaneers, Bengals, and the Houston Texans. 24 through 21, Denver Broncos. What a fraud team they are. The Jets. And then you have Cardinals and Miami Dolphins. Chargers at 20, Baltimore Ravens at 19, Green Bay Packers at 18, the Raiders at number 17, Bills at 16, benching Tyrod Taylor, Lions at 15, Redskins at 14, the Dallas Cowboys right there at number 13, 12 through 9 here. Titans, Falcons, Jaguars, and the Carolina Panthers. And then 8 through 5 here. Seahawks, Chiefs, Rams, and Steelers. Hey, folks, this is NFL Daily. Cam Rogers alongside Harris Rubenstein. We will get on? to those final teams in a matter of seconds, but... We want to remind everyone out there, we are indeed presented by Mizzen and Main Fantastic Performance Fabric Shirts that guys truly will love. These are dress shirts that are not made out of wrinkly, gross cotton. I'm talking about true, fantastic fabric that wicks away sweat. Very comfortable. And you know what? A lot of guys don't like to get clothing during the holiday season. But I got to say, Cam, if I opened up a package and I saw a Miz and Main shirt, I'd first be like, wait, I got a button down, and then i touch it and be like, ah. <laughs> it's a different yes, game. This is exactly. what I'm looking for. There so you if go. You, if you're thinking about getting someone a piece of clothing for the holidays, Miz and Main is the way to go. The website is comfortable.af. No typo there because they are indeed comfortable. Oh, as yes, that. they are. That is the website. So. All right, Harris, we're getting into the meat of these power rankings here. We just d d did the uh, Steelers there at number five. Let's get to number four, the Minnesota Vikings. Fresh off a four touchdown performance by Case Keenum. 2-0. And this is a team that should scare the rest of the NFC. 
protect the entire National Football League. I'm talking about even the Eagles included. This is a physical team that can win in January. I don't care who's playing at the quarterback position. Watch out. Because not only is this a good team camp, this is a team that's full of veterans. They have a good amount of young talent, but look, across the board, there aren't a lot of positions on this team that they're relying on rookies to you know, make point. up slack for them. That defensive line is full of veterans. That entire secondary is full of veterans. The entire offensive line are full of veterans. The only rookie they had playing this year was Dalvin Cook, and he blew out his knee. Stephon Diggs has been fantastic. Adam Thielen has been great. Kyle Rudolph has been fantastic this year as well. I, I, this, on my rankings, Cam, I had the Vikings at number three. You cannot convince me that the Saints are a better football team than the Vikings. The Vikings beat the Saints. The Vikings right now are the scariest team in football, in my opinion, after the Eagles. I really do think that if you put the Vikings and the Patriots on the same field right now, that would be a really, really close game. Linval Joseph, Anthony Barr, Xavier Rhodes having a nice year as well. Harrison Smith, an elite grade according to Pro Football Focus at the strong safety position this year. Oh, one of the best safeties in football. Unbelievable. Has been for, for a couple years now. I'm glad to see him getting the recognition he deserves. As we said, no doubt about it. Game of the week. Vikings, Rams, and I can't believe it's an early window game, too. Yeah, well, clock Eastern time. So. Fox, Fox is pro quite happy about that one. Yeah, so Vikings at number four in our power rankings. Let's check in with number three, the New Orleans Saints, the second team of the Super Bowl era to win its next seven games immediately following an 0-2 start. The other team to do that, 1993 Dallas Cowboys, won the Super Bowl that year. I, I don't, I don't want to hear about the Saints team. I, I look. Number three for me is I had them ranked at number six. I think this Saints team, look, I understand what they did against uh, the Bills last week. Congrats. We now know that the Bills are a bad football team. Thank you, Saints, for telling the rest of the world that the Buffalo Bills are not good. So before you get into that analysis, Harris, just to let the audience know, the polling that goes on with the power yes. rankings is AP, AP stop, stop. Correct. Right? So we congregate uh, a, a thorough list from various people within the chat sports community, yep. the employees here. Correct. And then... You're saying on your end, your personal list. I, you I had them at point. six because I'll look at it this way. This is who they beat, and this is who their last six wins are against on their win streak. They beat the Dolphins, they beat the Lions, they beat the Packers with no Aaron Rodgers, they beat the Bears, they beat the Bucks, and they beat the Bills. Cam, did I name a good football team? Uh, no, I did not. So you're making kind of the Wisconsin argument here. I, my, my argument is look, are they a good enough team to beat every bad team they face? Yes. Are they a playoff team? Yes. Is this a Super Bowl contender? No. I'm sorry. You put them on a field with a good football team? The two times they played good football teams this year, the Vikings, week one, the Patriots, week two, they got blown off the field. Blown off the field. They just, Until the Saints team beats a good team, they have a good challenge this week coming up, or uh, yes, co uh, yes, coming up this week against the Redskins, and then the week after they play the Rams. Yep. This is where we will learn if the Saints are a good football team. But as of right now, look, they run the ball well. It's great, but at the same time, they haven't beaten a good team yet. The only maybe good team they beat was the Panthers back in week three in one of the worst games that Cam Newton has played in his career. You're a big-time doubter of the I, Saints, right? I, I want to see them beat a good team. I, I, and second of all, I don't think this team's going to win on the road in the playoffs, and they're going to have to go on the road at least to beat Philly. I just... Are they better than the Vikings? No. Are they better than the Eagles? No. Are they better than the Seahawks in the playoffs? Probably not. Like, I, I'm, I'm not a believer in this team yet. I want to see them beat a good football team. So we usually have who dat nation and great numbers in our audience here. So we do have a reaction poll. Who's going to win the NFC? Will it be the Eagles, the Vikings, the Saints, or another team? I'm actually seeing a lot of hearts right now votes for the Eagles at this point. I know a lot of Vikings fans are in the comments section as well. Laughing face for the Saints, angry face for other Harris. They're probably going Eagles, right? It's or maybe the, Vikings. I, I think this, this arrangement's nice. The Saints are like a th three to four seed team in the playoffs that'll win the wild card game and lose against a better team. Like this, this isn't an elite all-time great football team like people are making it out to be. There are people saying, oh, this is the best team in the NFL right now. Blah, blah. We'll see what happens when Wisconsin is to play Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game. And we'll see what happens when the Saints <laughs> have to play a legitimately good football team. All right. I, I'm not a believer yet. All right, he's making the Wisconsin argument. We'll if he's pretending he's in the committee Two right now in the college football we'll playoff. We'll see. All right, folks, uh, 
throw in those reactions. We'll be tracking them throughout here. The Saints check in as the number three team in our power rankings. Number two, the New England Patriots. Tom Brady recently victorious over the Denver Broncos. Recorded here is his 86th regular season road win versus Denver. Passing Peyton Manning for the most in NFL history. And you know that means a lot to him because if there's one place that Tom Brady has struggled in, its, in his career, it's Denver. been in Denver. Yep. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you something, Cam, he did not struggle. 41-16 to in Denver is an awesome win for Tom Brady and any Patriots fan who hates playing in Denver. They seem like they play there every single year. But I'll put it this way, Cam. Ever since that game against the, against the Carolina Panthers, the Patriots defense has yet to give up 20 points in a game. Now, a minute. They have not played some upper-class NFL offenses. They haven't. But based off of what, they, what we saw in the first four weeks, there's no reason why this team ever should be giving up less than 20 points a game. So this Patriots team has figured something out on defense. The offense is rolling. Everyone, for the most part, on the offensive side is healthy. The only thing that's going to take this team down by now to not win the AFC are injuries. And then, you know, that's kind of what we expected going into the year. All right, so we asked everyone at home, who's winning the NFC? Same token, who's going to win the AFC? You get a heart for the Patriots, you've got a wow face for the Steelers, laughing face for the Chiefs, angry face for others. As long as long as it as long as the playoffs go through Gillette Stadium, you still have to go with the Patriots. Because yeah. look, the Chiefs are the only outside of maybe I, I don't know, not maybe, outside of the Ravens, the only team that has given the, the Patriots a run for their money in Foxborough has been the Chiefs. Right. But not in the playoffs. The Steelers. Well, the Ravens have, have actually won it. Exactly. Have, have the, the Steelers. The have whenever, not. Steelers, whenever they go into Foxborough in the playoffs. They falter. They haven't won. So, I'll tell you, the, the, the history of the AFC, at least since 2000, has always been, can you go into Foxborough and win a playoff game? If you can, usually you have a pretty easy enough path to the Super Bowl after that, outside of the New York Jets in those two crazy years. But... The Ravens, the two, t- the the Ravens, both the times they beat the Patriots in, in Gillette, they ended up having, I believe, they won the Super Bowl and then lost the AFC Championship game once. Yeah, one well, of the years. Yeah, you know, they, when they won in 2012 that season. Yeah, that was the year. Then yeah. they beat them in, in 2000. Beat, they beat them in 2009, to, the Ray Rice game. Yep, yeah, they, I'll never forget. Yeah, that. they didn't go very far after that. To be more specific about the Chiefs, there, by the way, I'm talking about the playoffs yes. in Gillette Stadium. Yes, yes, of yes, course, yes. they won earlier this year, Week One in Gillette. So, throw in your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to the number one team in our power rankings. The Philadelphia Eagles fly, Eagles fly. Throw it in the comments section, Eagles fans, because you are the number one team right now, and eight and one, rightfully so. This is a team plucked straight out of the 2011 NFL season, Cam. Just touchdowns on touchdowns on touchdowns on touchdowns. They just keep scoring all these passing touchdowns with Carson Wentz. The defense is good enough, though, to actually win them a Super Bowl, and that's what's really important about this team. But again, coming off of a bye, we have yet to see them play a game yet without Jason Peters. And I'm sorry, he is one of the best left tackles in all of football, and you take one of a player like him, uh, for instance, they now have to beat Dallas in Dallas, in Jerry World, against a very good defensive line without their best offensive lineman for the rest of the year. I don't think this game is going to be as much of a cakewalk as people think. Demarcus Lawrence has arguably been the best defensive player in all of football. And if Sean Lee's healthy, I think that they might actually give the Eagles a run for their money. But we'll see what happens with this Eagles team. Right now, they're the best team in football. They are definitely a Super Bowl favorite. But that Jason Peters injury might bode huge for their season. All right, we'll see what happens. I mean, they have dealt with it so far right now with the Eagles winning uh, without Peters there at the left tackle position, but could be a Tyron Smith type situation there. And like with the Cowboys, Eagles battling the Cowboys this week. All right, folks, the Eagles are number one. Let's summarize the entire power rankings here. Browns at 32, Giants at 31, 49ers at 30, Colts at number 29, Bears at 28, Buccaneers at 27, Bengals 26, Texans at 25. 24 through 21, Broncos, Jets, Cardinals, and Dolphins, Chargers, Ravens, Packers, and Raiders. Those are your number 20 through 17 teams. Raiders playing in Mexico City this week. Bills, Lions, Redskins, and Cowboys, 16 through 13. Then 12 through 9, we got the Titans, we got the Falcons, we got the Jags, and the Carolina Panthers there at number 9. 8 through 5 here, Seattle. Then the Kansas City Chiefs, Los Angeles Rams at number six, Pittsburgh Steelers at number five, and then finally your top four teams, Vikings, Saints, Patriots, Eagles. And as I say every single week, Cam, as usual, one of these top four teams next week will be off of our list. Wow. Every Old week. Stuff. This has happened 
Every single week of our NFL Power Rankings, we have dropped a top four team, and it will happen again this week. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This has been NFL Daily for Harris Rubenstein. I'm Cam Rogers. We'll see you next time.